Now that we've got our electrical components mounted on the backplate, it's time to start doing some wiring. This can all be done in the panel, but I thought I'd get a couple wires out of the way while it's out in the open. What I'm going to do is hook up the power wiring to both of the stepper drivers. I'm going to strip off about a quarter inch of insulation from both wires. Uh, starting with the red or positive wire. Insert the wire into one of the terminals on the power supply and that's going to be the positive terminal. This is uh, plus V. And take that wire up to one of the controllers to gauge your length and make a cut. And you're going to repeat this for the other driver. Same thing, Just strip off the wire insert it into the positive terminal on the power supply. I run both these wires into the same terminal. Uh, there's four terminals, two for each uh, positive and negative, and uh, we'll need the other one later. After the wires are cut to length, go ahead and strip off the other ends. This is stranded wire, so it's helpful to give the copper a little twist to make it uh, kind of all one unit so you don't have wires sticking out. You're going to repeat this step with the black or negative wire, inserting them into the negative terminals on the power supply. Make sure you leave a little slack in the wires when you're cutting to length. You may have to move them around a little bit once you start getting a bunch of wires in there, so it's, it's good to have a little play. We're going to connect the wires into the terminal block labeled ground and V+. The black wire goes there, red wire goes there. It's really handy to have these terminal blocks that pull out. It makes wiring a lot easier. Insert the black wire into the ground terminal. Tighten it down with a screwdriver and then give it a little tug just to make sure it's in there and it's not going anywhere. Do the same thing with the red wire. Go ahead and repeat this step with the second stepper driver, negative, positive. components on the back plate should now look like this. Now we can mount the back plate into the enclosure using the screws that came with the back plate and the enclosure. This is probably best to do uh, lying flat horizontally on the table, but I've got it propped up to show you uh, what it looks like. Next thing to do is install the strain relief in the enclosure. Uh, it's going to go on the left side on the bottom hole. These are sometimes called cord grips or cable glands, uh, which is kind of a gross name for them, but uh, whatever. Make sure that rubber o-ring goes on the outside 
of the strain relief. This is pretty straightforward, just insert the strain relief through the enclosure and use the included nut to tighten it down and attach it to the enclosure. You can actually get this thing pretty tight by hand uh, by both turning the nut inside the enclosure and turning the strain relief on the outside. Uh, if you want to, you can put a wrench on that nut and just give it another half turn, but uh, it's plastic, so be careful. And there we are. You can get the power cord from almost any home, home improvement store. Uh, this is an 8-foot power tool replacement cord. Uh, the difference with these is they usually come with uh, pigtailed ends. There's no plug on the other side, although you could uh, just as easily um, cut the end off a power cord and use it. But uh, I like the brand new ones and um, you know, they're already kind of ready to go. Uh, just put the power cord in through the uh, strain relief and uh, give yourself a little room on the other end to hook up to the on off switch. I route this down below the power supply but in reality it could just go straight in or anywhere into the uh, into the enclosure. I just do that to keep things clean. And once you've got it where you want it, go ahead and tighten down the nut on the outside. It doesn't have to be too tight. You may want to give yourself a little more length um, in the end when you start wiring things up. Uh, but once you've got it where you want it, you know, I just pull the cord back out and uh, give myself a little space to put the on-off switch in there. So these are the on-off switch components. Um, it only comes with one terminal block, so you'll need to order a couple extras. Uh, so I have two. I like to turn uh, the line and the neutral off. Uh, also, you don't have to, but I like to order this uh, little legend plate here, little on-off switch. It looks really nice. Something you'll have to do is take the little tab out of the bottom, uh, and I use a round file, and it's it's aluminum, uh, so it just kind of you can just kind of file it off really easy. Uh, it's not a big deal, and you can test it just by putting that switch through there. You may want to get at it from the back too, just to make sure it sits flush against the enclosure. And there we go, fits nicely. So this on-off switch uh, has uh, a switch, a legend plate that goes on the outside, and then it has this metal base that the switch uh, locks into, and then there's these screws that kind of push against the enclosure to lock everything in place. You may need to back out the screws a little bit um, at first just to get that switch to, to lock in there. It's pretty easy to install. You just put in the selector switch and uh, you push it into the middle base and turn and it's keyed so it kind of locks it in there. And then tighten down the screws and that pushes against the enclosure and locks everything in there real nice and tight. Um, you might just kind of want to hand tighten it at first just to kind of get it on there a little bit and go to the other side and align the on off switch and the legend plate to the uh, to the position you'd like them to be. You can see it's just I got it on there and uh, nothing's in the right spot so you know, loosen it up and you can put that where you want it. And I'm just going to straighten it up here so it looks nice.
there we go that's the switch now that the switch is mounted we can wire up the terminal blocks and install them into the switch remove the ends from your power cord and give those wires a little twist and I'm just making sure here that my wires are going to reach everywhere they need to reach and I'm just doing a little fitting here insert the black wire into one of the terminal blocks and tighten it down so when you're putting these together uh, the terminal blocks are aligned so that the silver attachment screws are on the outside just like this and do the same thing with the white wire It's a little tight working in this panel, but just take your time. I'm putting them both in here at once, but you can do one and then the other. Just line them up with their slots and use your screwdriver to attach them to the on-off switch. And for the last part of this, we just need to attach that green ground wire to the power supply. And it goes into the terminal labeled FG. Right there, it's the third one in from the, uh, into the case. And there we go. I've got a couple pieces of 16 gauge stranded wire lying around and I'm going to wire those from the on off switch into the power supply. And what I'm going to do is just kind of check my length here and make sure it's enough wire. Uh, it's not too short, not too long. And I'm going to do the same thing with the white wire. And these are going to be wired into the power supply uh, into the line and neutral terminals and those are designated by an L and an N. So just strip off the wire, twist up the ends like you've been doing. Make sure you put the correct wire in the correct terminal black to black and white to white. First I'm going to run the white wire into the neutral terminal on the power supply and that's the terminal that says N. After you tighten your connections, always give your wires just a little tug just to make sure that they're in there and seated properly. Uh, you really don't want any loose connections.
All right, and for the last part of this video, we're going to install the indicator light. Uh, this is a nice little light. Uh, it's an LED light, so it's going to last a long, long time. Um, I'm just unscrewing the terminals here, and it comes with a little retention knob or retention nut. Just unscrew that. This is pretty simple, just pass it through the enclosure and use that retention nut to tighten everything up. Now one little detail, uh, make sure to orient the terminals uh, up and down or top to bottom as opposed to left and right. Uh, they just end up being easier to wire that way. Now I'm going to use the same 16 gauge stranded wire to wire up the indicator light as I did uh, to do the power wiring from the switch. And we're going to go from the switch to the indicator light. Now I'm not going to show this, but I ended up having to rewire this because I didn't make these uh, wires long enough in the first place. The speed controller goes in between the indicator light and the on off switch. And when I went to install it, it didn't. Uh, I didn't have enough slack in the wires to, to move them around, um, so just make them a little bit longer than you see me making them here. So what we're going to do is wire in the indicator light uh, in parallel with the uh, power supply side, so the, the load side of the switch, not the side that has the power coming in from the wall. So just loosen up that terminal and uh, insert the black wire into the black wire terminal and tighten it back down. Now take the other end of the wire and insert it into one of the terminals on the indicator light. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. Go ahead and repeat that process with the other white wire and hook it up into the other terminal of the indicator light. And we're done. At this point you can plug in the power cord and test your light, test your wiring, and turn it on and off. There we go works. Thanks for watching.